Would you repeat the question? It's not a difficult one. Would you say that Adam Chandler is a good father? He... I know he thinks so. But you don't. You have to understand, I didn't know my father until I was a teenager. So, obviously, in, in, in those sorts of terms of, of what's a good father, he missed out on, you know, helping me with my homework, staying up with me if I was sick, that kind of stuff. But I can always turn to him for uh, financial help or business advice. Have you ever wished that Adam Chandler were not your father? Well, I, he's always there for me personally and professionally. You're having a great deal of difficulty answering these yes or no questions. You were subpoenaed to be here today, weren't you? Yes. So is it fair to say that you would have preferred not to testify in this matter? I just don't see what I can add. Oh, how about this? Has Adam Chandler ever resorted to illegality in looking out for you? I don't know what you mean. Did he ever bribe a judge? Can she do that? Can she bring up Max? Surely you can answer, Ms. Vaughn. Or are you trying to choose from the many criminal acts committed by Adam Chandler? Objection, Your Honor. I'm going to ask for a sidebar at this time, please. Approach. We were afraid that Mateo's first wife would disappear with his son and that we would never see that little boy again. It was a very confusing time for all of us. Naturally, my father was concerned as to what would happen. So your father thought Jasmine, nothing I don't know himself what is going on, but Adam is up to something. Or in trying to take no a child what, away from his mother? I don't have any idea what Eric could possibly have to say. Does your mother just can't let her talk. talk? Bought off a judge so that you and Mateo Santos could gain full custody of his son. Objection, right? Your Honor. This subject has absolutely nothing to do with the case it at hand. It goes to cause. My client is seeking custody precisely because of actions such as these. Mr. Chandler has no respect for the law. Let's rein back the oratory, Miss Colson. Thank you, Judge. Yes, Your Honor. If the court wishes, I will pursue the matter. We have plenty of other witnesses who will testify to Mr. Chandler's reprehensible moral character. Your Honor, there for Pete's sake. There is no need to call any other witnesses. The judge you're referring to in that case was removed from the bench for numerous improprieties. Including a bribe from your father. If my father tried to influence a judge, and I'm not saying that he did, but if he did, it was out of love for me. And because he thought that's what I wanted. So, in an unconventional way, yes. Adam Chandler is a good father. Do you regret having Adam Chandler as a father? No. I do not. Thank you, Miss Vaughn. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Any more from you, Miss Colson? No, Your Honor. You're excused. I'm gonna go see Janet and Amanda. Thank you. You okay? Miss Colson, you may call your next witness. We call Miss Dixie Martin. Adam never cared about me or my feelings. He wanted to have a child, and I happened to be around. So, essentially, he used you as a broodmare. Oh, objection, Your Honor. Counsel is putting words in the witness's mouth now. Stain, that statement will be struck. Thank you. Go on. Well, essentially, he used me as a broodmare. How old is Adam Jr. now? He's, uh, 12 years old. Would you like to know if he regrets being Adam Chandler's son? Objection! Sustain. Hearsay. Sustained. Mrs. Martin, have you had occasion to speak to your son about his father? Uh, yes, practically every day. I have seen my son confused and upset by his father's behavior. For my son's sake, I've had to explain away Adam's selfish manipulative, controlling actions. Fortunately, our son is old enough to see for himself what kind of father, what kind of man Adam Chandler is. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. I'm sure that everyone here appreciates how difficult it's been for you to give this testimony. 
That's all for this witness, Your Honor. I have something to say, Your Honor. May I? No, you may not. Please sit down. But these proceedings are a travesty. Are we here to crucify Adam Chandler or to decide the fate of poor little Colby? I told you to sit down. I suggest you do it now. Your Honor, I can't. In all good conscience, I can't. And believe me, once you hear what I have to say, there will be no doubt in your mind whatsoever as to where poor little baby Colby should be placed. Jack, no. You, you have to stop this. She can't take this stand. You have to stop her. Order. I'll have order. Ted, I think she knows. Miss Kane, exactly on whose behalf are you here to testify? Dr. Martin or Mrs. Colby Chandler? I'm here to testify on the behalf of truth, Your Honor. And, Jake, I hope you know that I mean that. No, 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 Jack, you, you can stop Mr. this. Go away. Go away. Call your client, please. please. Yes, yes, Judge. No. Mr. Montgomery, do you wish to call Miss Kane as a witness? No, Your Honor, not in the least. Miss Colson? There you have it, Miss Kane. As neither party agrees to call you, I cannot allow you to testify. Of course you can, Your Honor. You're Judge Mayo. I understand you do pretty much what you like in Ms. this Kane, courtroom. Miss Kane, I'm warning you. For heaven's sakes, Your Honor, if this were a murder trial and I knew the identity of the killer, would you also throw me out? But this is not a murder trial. Now, leave my courtroom or I'll hold you in contempt. You cannot just kick me out as if I don't matter. I have very important information that could change the course of this Get entire Get it through your head, Miss Kane. You cannot testify today. Well, if you won't allow me to take the witness stand, then I simply will speak from right here. You will be silent. Why is it that I am so misunderstood? My motives Why are can't we just let her speak? Just no. Let her shut up. And yet I what keep coming back to court. What could she possibly have to say about Colby? Is because I care Silence, about Silence, order. Miss Kane, you are trying my patience. Your Honor, I'm Erica Kane. Now, you can't just dismiss me. I have information. I can stop this hearing dead in its tracks, and I will. Lieutenant Fry. This entire custody hearing is a total farce. Arrest this woman. Slap a gag on her if necessary. Derek, how can you... Put her in lockup and charge her with contempt of court. Come on, don't make this hard. No, this is outrageous. Erica. Don't you know who I am? I've forgotten already. Take Adam, Adam, away. Adam. I, Adam. I, uh, Jack? What the hell was that all about? Uh, Comic relief. Like, like, all right, everyone, we're moving on. And if I hear so much as a hiccup from any of you, I'll throw you in jail, too. Get it? Miss Coulson, please call your next witness. I call Jillian Andrashi Martin. And Jake told me that he wanted me to be happy because if I were happy, I could make a happy home for Colby. And that's when I knew that he would be the perfect husband and the perfect father for Colby. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. I think that's all we need to know. Oh, oh, excuse me, I forgot, I forgot to say that if Jake and I do get custody of Colby, I plan to join the PTA. Well, I'm sure they'll be very pleased. Thank you. Cross, Mr. Montgomery. Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mrs. Martin. Good afternoon. Now, you told this court that you thought Jake Martin would be the perfect husband. Now, you've had some experience with husbands, haven't you? I mean, this is not the first time you've been married, is it? No, it's not. So? So, the first time you got married, you didn't get married for love, did you? You got married so you could get a green card and stay in this country. Is that not true? Yes. You were so convincing that you actually fooled an agent from the Department of Immigration, a man by the name of Pinkerton, into believing that you two were actually in love. We had to. You had to lie. And in fact, you lied so well that you convinced a trained professional. So you would understand it if we in this courtroom, since you only married Jake Martin a few days ago, would be just a little bit suspicious that maybe this was just another marriage of convenience. Yes. To supply a ready-made mother for Colby and to make your second husband's custody case much stronger. I love my husband with all my heart and soul. Love my husband with all my heart and soul. Those very words you said to Mr. Pinkerton about your first husband. 
Let me ask you this. Has Dr. Martin promised you anything in return Objection. for your cooperation your Honor, in this matter? This kind of questioning yes, is yes, immaterial. Yes. Mrs. Martin's character is not an issue in this case. Oh, is that right? Well, you certainly made my client's husband's character an issue. He's right, Miss Colson. You started it. Thank you, Judge. Isn't it also true that when you were married to your first husband, you had an affair with a local prominent physician? Yes. And then there's the matter of the $100,000 that you received for doing what exactly? And so that's why you became a fugitive from the law. I did that because I loved my husband very much. You loved him, the man you married to get a green card. Yes. Well, whether you loved him or not... How much longer is he going to go on with this nonsense? I got a the life you've been leading has been... Okay. A, no, no, you can't a study. Life. Just ending up downstairs like Erica. Look, I hate what he's doing as much as you do, but that's what lawyers do. I, mean, I think he's just doing his job. And a pretty ugly job it is, too, abusing a poor young woman that but, way. But I've changed ever since I've known Jake. I look at things differently. I'm, I'm, I'm not the same person anymore. Really? Since when? Since this morning? Since last week? Because up until very recently, Princess Jillian Andrashi was a very spoiled, very promiscuous young woman who married one man and slept with another. I've already admitted that I... You what have you admitted exactly? Besides a profession of true love and an indication that you would like to one day join the PTA, what else have you told this court that would convince this court that you would be a better mother to Colby than Liza? Look at Liza. Look at her. Now you tell this court that you would be a better mother than the woman who carried this child, than the woman who gave birth to this child. Is that what your idea of love is? To tear a child away from her natural mother? No, of course that's not what I want. 